What's up guys, it's Eva 10 here. So the gateway update is upon us and I thought we actually had a little bit more time, but the last quadrant update did take up, gosh, it was like four, four and a half months. Uh, it did take up quite a while. So the foundation quadrant uh, update. So I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly. Plus I'm gonna show some hidden gems that wasn't really necessarily shown on this like initial gateway update thing. And I'm gonna look into the patch notes here uh, in a little bit, but they do give a brief overview about the quadrant update and there's actually some pretty good stuff that came out of the quadrant update i'm a little disappointed with the way the actual like um the celebration of each of the empires went because it seems like the mimitar got all the all the love and it sounds like each year uh, a different empire gets a little bit more uh focus and attention and additional content compared to the other ones but um even then i really hope they kind of expand upon that and do it till at least like two empires or something like that uh, regardless, they do a, a brief overview about this quadrant update when it comes to skill plans that you're able to share it with new players, uh, as well as the new player experience, which visually looks extremely appealing and very, very good. Um, so a bit more on the gateway update. Again, helping new players. Um, also, it says signaling updates for resource scarcity. So they are actually adding some new ice and some minerals back into New Eden uh, slowly but steadily. But there have been some adjustments to that uh, indirectly. And I'm not a huge ice miner, but it sounds like some of the stuff they're implementing doesn't necessarily sound like a huge buff. It sounds like a buff, but also side by side with a nerf potentially. So uh, it says right here, welcoming new pilots, uh, you know, brand new air experience, air being the, the new uh, corporation that was added to help, I believe, just kind of streamline the new player experience instead of having four different empires and four different new player experiences. Now it's just air kind of onboarding all of the capsulars, which I like in a way because hopefully if they're able to flesh out the storyline with air, I think it's going to be very, very rewarding and I would like that very much. But if not, if this is strictly just a surface level thing to kind of initially just get new players interested, then the story kind of just tapers off and nothing really happens. I'd much rather have the empire one because when you start as a new player, you really felt immersed in part of your empire running missions for them initially and meeting uh, different high ranking uh, officials. But with this, uh, the Association of Interpl Interdisciplinary Research, um, I really hope that they flesh that out. This isn't, you know, kind of crafting this narrative-driven content stuff, which is cool. Um, right here, too, it says the starter boost training bundle is now available in the Eve Start, 15% off. I will say that I've actually been making some YouTube short versions of kind of covering some of the, the new Eden store stuff, which I kind of need to catch up on. The starter training boost bundle is probably the absolute worst thing you could get uh, for its cost. You're 99 times out of 100 just better off just getting the Omega. Uh, plus the the prototype boost thing that you get with it only works if your character is less than 14 days old so if you get it on your 13th day as a brand new character it only works for one day so i do not recommend that at all just get omega instead do not even bother with this <laughs> with this training boost bundle to be honest because uh, it's going to double your training time it's going to give you access to more ships and more modules uh, the, the omega is going to be better for you so skill plans says focus on your advancement so the whole skill plan feature I do think there's some changes that need to be made. That the update is already here. I really thought they were going to spend a bit more time fleshing out the the this kind of the skill plans and stuff because um, there are some things I like about it, but there's some things I don't. Um, I've actually looked up some things on Reddit, and as of right now, there's very little to almost no way you can actually see how long a training is going to be until you actually add it. Same thing with some of the the skill books. I believe if you try to buy it beforehand, like straight off of the the skill plan like menu, it doesn't tell you how much it costs until you're about to buy it. Then you can cancel it. So just a few things they could definitely polish up there as well as just the menu in general like it just i, I wish i could kind of uh, change some of the box menus sizes as well as well as the text font and some other things but uh, that will have to be its own video i'm not focusing too much on that i'm just focusing on this update that is coming through so i think this is this is legitimately the main reason why ccp revamped the new player experience why they added um, the skill plan thing this is kind of it was all centered around this and probably could be part of the reason why the, the Q2 quadrant update uh, took so long was just because they might have needed more time to, to develop this new player experience. So the, the EVE online is going to be in the Epic Store now. So this is the same game or developers or whatever that does um, uh, Fortnite, Rocket League, as well as some other really popular games. So it's just another platform similar to Steam that you can buy games off of. And yeah, this, these, these type of games do have a certain standard. There's a lot of AAA games on here that do, especially when you're talking about, it's probably more known for Fortnite and like Rocket League, which do have a more, let's say, stylized uh, graphics, which tend to look very aesthetically pleasing. So I clicked back here a few times. Gosh, all these like 
bright screens. But I remember typing in uh, EVE Online, and it's actually not going to be released until September 13th, I believe. Or no, September 23rd. So if we type in EVE Online here, sorry for the clicking. So EVE Online. And I believe the video that they're also presenting here it looks like it's about a year, maybe a year and a half old. All right, it's not populating right now. I'm just going to go back to this. So. Yeah, it sounds like they're adding it to the Epic Game Store. It says, hey, we're going to accept basically a whole new wave of players from the Epic Game Store, which I would say are maybe demographically a little bit on the younger side than kind of what we're typically used to. It's probably no different than Steam. But um, yeah, so I think that's, this is why the whole new player experience was, was revamped with new graphical updates, with the, the skill plans, just to make everything look more aesthetically pleasing. So when the new players join, uh, the game looks a little bit less dated than it's 2000, you know, than it was like back in 2003. Because that is one of the things it does say on the Epic Store is that they, this game came out in 2003. And, you know, the, the video still shows like the old Gita 4.4. So I really hope they kind of update that as well. Um, anyway, it says on the horizon. So things that are coming up on the horizon. It sounds like, honestly, as of right now, a lot of this is just filler content for the veterans. It's all new player focus, which I think is fine. Um, there is some hope that it says in November there will be some stuff actually for veterans that actually is going to come out here in the next like two to three months. But for now, it's all about the new players. Um, it does say here that the resource distribution, there will be more ice brought back into New Eden with its availability having been doubled and the availability of Mercox also increased. Um, it says this is going to be the start of like the greater resource scarcity kind of coming to an end. Um, not going to, there's not much to talk about here, but here's the patch notes of the actual. Um, update and you actually see a reason why I actually put alpha down there. So one of the things they don't mention in that patch thing is actually how the ice is being distributed. So um, it says now spawning to their original locations with one guaranteed site per solar system. So it sounds like I'm not exactly sure to be honest. I did do a lot of ice mining uh, when it came to like pre nerf uh, industry. So I'm not sure if this is actually a buff or a nerf, but it says the adjusted respawn time to ice belts to six hours. I thought this was four hours and now they increased it to six. I might be wrong at that wrong with that but if if i am let me know down in the comments but it sounds like they're like more ice belts they're they're doubling the amount by guaranteeing it but there might be less sites per system i'm not exactly sure but uh, with the increase in mercox quantities inside asteroids by 200 percent, that's nice uh, the number of asteroids so they're just basically buffing a lot of the asteroids um, remove variants of arcanar uh bistot from deposit anomalies that have that have mercox so they're kind of removing that um, I'll actually put a link, obviously, to the, to the Gateway Quadrant update, as well as these patch notes as well. But one thing that is very interesting down here is the skills, which I might have to make its own video about the skill plans. But uh, Library of Certified Skill Plans, which I, I really hope you can remove that eventually. I, I would really hate to, to keep looking at that uh, all the time. But it says, increase the skill queue limits for Alpha and Omega characters. Now Capsulars can add 150 skills into their training queue. So um, Alpha as well. And remove the 24-hour... Uh, limit restriction for alpha training queue. So now you can actually make new characters that are alpha accounts queue up 5 million skill points worth of stuff ahead of time, not worry about logging in each day. And I really think we're going to see a huge influx potentially of people skilling 5 million SP, you know, skill planners, not skill planners, but like uh, skill point farmers. These pe could, be, could be people that are selling accounts. Who knows? But I, I definitely think there's going to be something really interesting, or I'm not sure what, what exactly is going to happen, but I definitely want to see a huge influx of SP farmers uh, because now they're actually able to queue up an alpha account. It's going to take a while to get you to 5 million SP as an alpha account, but it is doable. So now that they're actually lifting this restriction, so now anyone can actually skill up to the point to 5 million SP without ever having to log in um, at all whatsoever. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. I'll probably do uh, another video with an update of what I think the new skill plans are because I logged in very briefly and there are some things I do like and there's some things I don't like. So I'll probably make a video of that here in the near future. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Down in the comments, let me know what you guys think about this update. Is there things you guys do like, you don't like um, as well? I think I'll also do a video as well talking about the, um, the foundation update that just passed and some of the things I did and didn't like about that as well. So, but that's pretty much it. Hope you guys take care and you fly safe.